Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Church of the Messiah. So good to see you. And to those of you joining via Zoom, welcome as well. We will begin our service with a prayer of meditation that Father Jim will offer. And I'm so glad to see you all this morning. Imaginative God, creator of all that is, inspire us who are overwhelmed by the complexities of life. Send through us the great rushing wind of your spirit to stir our hopes and breathe into us new life. Kindle in us the flame of your spirit that with energy and enthusiasm, we may rise to meet the challenges of our work to bring heaven on earth today and every day of our lives. Amen. Amen. Are hid. 
Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and work with and magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> the fullness of your grace, that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up. And there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. 
So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested upon them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, and a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Nadab are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. letter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with the oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. 
Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it didn't rain on the earth. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anything among you, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back such a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown. 
thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Sunday, Father Jim had this wonderful idea of asking the congregation to, to write what's in their hearts and minds, and it was a very spiritual uh, exercise, in my opinion, and so many of you did, and uh, later on, when I came to the church, I wasn't at this, the AAM and 10 AM service, I had them on my desk, and I read them, all of them, and uh, and I love that about the Episcopal Church. It's actually one of the things that brought me to it was that I didn't have to leave my brain in the parking lot to get in. I could go in with my doubts, my my questions, my struggles, and have a place where where I could wrestle with that. So I will I will really welcome that exercise and find find it first of all very pastoral and. Second, I was surprised that many of those questions were about hell. <laughs> about hell? Well, I, I can assure you, I promise you that from this pulpit, either Father Jim or myself will make some time to preach to you about hell. It's not the thing about driving to downtown Los Angeles and say, oh my God, this is hell, not like that. <laughs> And it's never, according to Father Jim, it's not either about riding with me in my car and feeling that that is hell. Not at all. Either. But we're going to find time to preach about that because it seems like that's in your mind and in your heart. And we're going we're gonna to address it, right? I want to talk about something else today. And I want you to be with me on that first reading uh, in, in the back, uh, from Scripture today. In that first reason, Moses is overwhelmed and the people are hungry. They seem to regret the journey from slavery to freedom. And Moses is tired and he asks God for help. In response, God asks Moses to gather 70 elders around the meeting tent so that they can take their place and support Moses. The spirit rested on them and then began to prophesy. As the story has it, two elders remain in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested, rested on them. They were among the, the registered, but they had not gone out of the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Elda and Melda are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the assistant of Moses said, my Lord Moses, please stop them. In today's gospel, the disciples come to the Lord, trouble about someone, an outsider, someone without standing in the community who's casting out demons in Jesus' name. 
scripture does not record who this someone was, so we can only spe speculate, but we will never know for sure. But the disciples certainly do not put out the welcome sign for him. Like over eager corporate attorneys defending their company's trademark in the marketplace, they act quickly to protect their exclusive franchise on the use of Jesus' name and authority. They want these outsiders stop. And they take the matter right to the top, confident that Jesus will get the point and lower this person's success. The first reading and the gospel message today bring forward two hugely important messages that are so relevant today in the 21st century, so relevant in this complex and evolving world we live in. First, is the responsibility that we all have in creating, God, creating God's kingdom right here in our own time. Moses struggled, struggled with his limitation to meet the needs and cries of the Israelites. Moses failing is that he sees only himself as being God's instrument. He cries out that as a chosen one, God has given him an impossible task. God's anointing of the 70 elder was an important lesson for Moses. Perhaps an important lesson in the value of delegating. But I think more importantly, it is a lesson in the shared call that we have as a faith community. Just as Moses needed 70 elders to carry the load, we need every member of every faith community to live fully into their baptismal covenant and to be about the work of creating God's kingdom. In 1966, the House of Bishops appointed a committee to study the place of women in the ministry of the Episcopal Church, 1966. The committee concluded that there are no dogmatic or biblical reasons against ordaining women to the priesthood or as bishops. Nevertheless, the General Convention failed time after time to authorize ordination of women. In 1974, five bishops ordained 11 women on the Feast of Mary and Martha. Their action did not resolve the controversy, but did make it impossible for the church to avoid the issue any longer. Finally, in 1976, the General Convention meeting in Minneapolis approved the ordination of women. And guess what? You can imagine a lot of paperwork and documents and a library of things in terms of process to get to that point. Lots of documents, right? You know what it took at the end? Changing a single word in the canons. It changed the word man to person. And there you have it, women surveying as priests. <laughs> as the ordination prior to the change, the church concluded that they were valid, they were valid sacramental act, even though they did not follow the rules of the church. Now in speak, speak Episcopal language, they were valid, but irregular. Consecration of Jean Robinson, the first openly gay uh, ordained Episcopal bishop, was also valid but irregular. But these valid but irregular sacramental acts, they go back to the earliest history of the church. Is that a new problem? Remember Cornelius, the Roman centurion and non Jew? When the Holy Spirit fills Cornelius' home and his household, Peter asked, Who can forbid water that this person should be baptized? Then the leaders of the church in Jerusalem 
hear what Peter has done and call him to account. Why did you go to the uncircumcised man and eat with them and baptize them? When Peter tells them that the Holy Spirit had done, they rejoice that God has given repentance and life even to the Gentiles. What if not of Peter, of Peter's valid but irregular reception of Cornelius? We, non-Jewish Christian, might not be here today. Sometimes the movement of the Holy Spirit demands that the church act first and amend its rules later. John, the disciples object that an outsider without credentials has inserted himself into the mission of the 12. His act may be valid, that is casting out demons, but they are irregular. Church of the Messiah is about everyone getting involved, about everyone being engaged in the personal and community work to live out our call. The work of this church doesn't stop with the clergy, with the vestry, with the choir, not doesn't stop with an annual pledge or the peace and justice work done. You see, it doesn't stop, but rather it starts. It starts with each of us, with you, with the relationship you have with your child, your co-worker, your mechanic, your neighbor, and with the actions that you take in caring not just for your kind or my kind or whatever that kind means, but the actions you take on behalf of all of God's creation. Now, I know that our lives are busy, full of full and often even overwhelming, but if we also, if we are to be God's hands and ears and legs and voice in the world, we have to find time to be in relationship with God, time to allow him to rest of his spirit upon us, to prayerfully discern the multitude of ways each of us is called to love and to serve God and our neighbors. The second message brought forward is an important lesson from Jesus that I would like, to, I would like us to understand. It is about the central role Jesus played and continues to play in our relationship with God our faith, and our daily walk with God. Jesus is central to our faith and to our relationship with God. But that doesn't negate or make less than those traditions that understood God without the presence of Jesus. Whoever is not against us is for us. I like to think that the 21st century understanding of this chapter 9 is an invitation to be in partnership with others who embrace the spirit, the spirit of God within the context of their call, which may be different from our tradition. Am I clear enough that I'm talking about our interfaith friends from other religious traditions? One of the great beauties of this parish is our diversity. We come from many different walks of life, many different cultures. We're taking the many gifts that these many different cultures and we seek to connect them in a way that furthers our common understanding of what God is calling us to be and to do in this world. I believe, my friends, that the day we're able to take the many different gifts of the many different faith traditions that embrace God's spirit, and we find a way to honor and knit them together in the fabric of love, that that will be the day that we will be able to propel God's vision for the kingdom right here on earth in our time. In every respect, Jesus' message is both about the inclusion of every individual in the creation of God's kingdom. Jesus does not want to anyone to sit down he wants everyone to every one of us stepping forward to receive the bread and wine made holy stepping forward to experience the gift of his giving the strength and the courage to love and serve 
with blindness and singleness of heart. And I can assure you that I work would be valid and at times it will be very irregular as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the and the weak. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. And all seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, John and Diane, our bishops, and Jim and Abel, our priests. For all of us who are God in the church. For Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, and Vincent Vicente, our mayor. For all of the government, both authority and nations of the world. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We give thanks this morning for those in our community celebrating birthdays and anniversaries between September 26th and September 30th. For Joseph Romero, Amy Vanderhelm, John Carter, Arcadia Vasquez, Vincent Navarrete, Pauline Herbert Whiting, Mary Elaine Songson, and Luan Mendel. We pray for those impacted by a train derailment in Montana yesterday, including three people who died and several who were injured, and for rescue personnel. We continue to pray for those affected by wildfires, and especially for fire personnel working to protect people and property. We pray for our leaders to develop policies to address the global climate crisis. We pray for all those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, especially healthcare workers tending to those sickened by the virus whose variants are causing a resurgence of infection and hospitalization. We pray for our homeless sisters and brothers that they may receive shelter, food, 
health care, and that their dignity be respected. We pray for policies that allow people to have safe and affordable shelter. From the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church. We pray for those in our community who have asked for our prayer. Victoria and Katie, Tyler Hudson, Esther Hernandez, Douglas Sheridan, Doug Lord, Ronaldo Lopez, Adis Rodriguez, Yvonne Beltran, Manuel Beltran. We give thanks for the one in whose honor the altar flowers have been given today in celebration of the 60th wedding anniversary of Charlene and Royal Lord, and in thanksgiving for the joy Messiah has been in their lives. We continue to pray for those named in the ongoing prayer list and for those we hold in our hearts. At this time, the prayers of the congregation are welcome to you silently or aloud. God of grace, inspire us with your vision of the world as it might be. Energize us for your work of healing and reconciliation in our community and in the wide, wider world. Free us from all that would thwart the expression of your spirit within us. Help us to trust our lives in this community of faith to your never ending love and care. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. <laughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in all glory and deed, what our Lord had done, and what our world we have met on the Lord. You may have not loved you in our whole heart. We are not loved by neighbors and as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we are hungry for For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We stand as we're able. Jesus says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Let us therefore greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us in the language of our choice, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He does not have temptation, but deliver us from evil. I ask kingdom and the power and the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> This bread to share in the body of Christ. Look, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome to Christ's table.
this day and always. Amen.
world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Okay, please let me, if you might be seated for the announcements. Welcome to Church of the Messiah. And as you are aware, due to the COVID 19 protocols, that's why we leave the announcements to the very end. We're very grateful to those of you who were able to connect to us this morning through really Zoom. We miss you and we wait for you until it's safe for you to consider to join us. So, welcome as well to Messiah. As Father Jim said, whoever you are, wherever you might find yourself in the journey of faith, that there is a place for you here, that everyone is welcome, no exception. Uh, right after the service, we gather in the patio where we will share coffee and connect with one another. I invite you to do so uh, uh, in a well, right now, because I don't have any other announcement, that might be a good news. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll see you in the panel. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah.